Thank you, Magda. I think that was a very um, interesting um, presentation in terms of t um, understanding how the development of art in Poland um, slightly differs in terms of departing point, uh, as Magda said, was actually architecture. Uh, or her, you know, her argument was that it was architecture and especially the work of um, of that this gallery did. Um, and uh, this is also important to understand, I guess, uh, uh, what were, what are the the uh, younger generation of artists were influenced by in their development uh, of their art practices in Poland, uh, like Zmijewski and Paweł Altamer. Um, um, so now, um, I think we can open up a little bit uh, uh, with questions by, uh, you know, that Anna Zanewski is going to moderate this conversation uh, with the participant in this, in today's session. Um, and I think there we can uh, also end up with some questions from the audience. I think we're going to do 30 minutes of conversation and I hope 10 minutes of questions from the audience. Uh, and that will give us enough time, I think, to, I hope, to open up a little bit uh, the discussion uh, in relation to what has been said this morning and in all the presentations. Um, Anna, can I welcome you on stage? And uh, Laura, please, uh, Sundung, uh, Tanya, Magda. Anna Janewski is also going to be speaking this afternoon. Um, she is the associate creator, as I said, of media and performing performance art in uh, MoMA in New York. Our, there will be a more extensive introduction of her this afternoon. Can you, yeah, you can hear me. So thank you very much. Thank you very much to Snezhana and to all the garage staff for inviting me into this uh, incredible organization. And unfortunately, I was not able to, to be here with you yesterday. So this is my, my first day and I'm entering in the, in the, in the middle of the discussion. And um, for sure, those presentations were really, uh, as, as Nejana repeated, very interesting, but I would say even more than that, they, they were also, it, what was really uh, striking, it was the different practices, and considering also the historical practice, the different practices, and what actually all the practices that come upon the term of performance. And uh, as, Mag as the last presentation somehow talking about the, the let's say, the history of a cert certain historical framework of, of a performance art in, uh, of let's, let's call it performance art in, in Warsaw, in Poland, and I had the opportunity to work with Magda in Warsaw also and to work in a museum for four years. And if we think about the contemporary, for example, Polish artist, we know Artur Zmijewski that Magda mentioned, of Paweł Adhammer, there is this lineage with Oskar Hansen. So when, while I was sitting there, there's this qu a question that came to my mind and I didn't to think to start like that, but I will just bring it up and then we can start from there and please jump in the conversation whenever you feel. Because as I said, so there are different practice. Laura, you, you are almost, Laura, you, you almost said this is not performance, what, what I'm, uh, I'm doing. Tanya, I think that it's quite performative work. You're using your own body, you're in the center. And the social, and, the social and political, yeah. And Nastya was not there, but knowing your work, you're also, it, 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 it's really a, a lecture performance, music, video and so so many layers and song down you have this practice that is going i wouldn't say the other not but you're involving also your family and so on so my first question would be i would like to ask you somehow the start like uh, of your activity in term of performance or not performance like how how did it start? Like we can try for new song. I read somewhere that you start in eighty nine. In eighty nine was the moment when you stopped painting and you opened to to performance and to video. Uh was in the first time, and then I was in the first time, and then I was in the 
但是那个作品呢，呃，是一个呃观众参与的作品。然后呢，我也找了我的一些学生，然后来进行现场的表演。但是作品呢，在展览了三十分钟之后，然后呢，政府呢就把它封了，封掉了。呃，原因呢有三个，当时给了我，呃，说是第一个叫做呃不严肃，呃，就不是严肃的艺术。第二个呢是具有煽动性，第三个是不安全。所以我在最开始做公开的行为艺术的展览的时候，呃，是被取缔的。呃，之后呢，呃，其实我的很多的作品，呃，都发生在公共空间或者是在我的私人空间，但是呢，呃，不是在展览的空间。呃，比如我有一件我认为对我来讲很重要的作品，叫《水写日记》，呃，就是我用毛笔蘸着水，然后每天在同一块石头上写日记，写完了那个东西也都看不到了，呃，这也是我的一个行为艺术的方式。Well, I, I I don't know. I find myself very very privileged to to be kind of considered a, a, an artist or anything like that. I didn't I didn't choose it. I didn't study for it. I just wanted to do music, but it seemed that I yelled too much, uh, and uh, music uh, wasn't wasn't exactly the the place where they thought I fitted. And contemporary art, to some extent, paid attention to what I was doing. And uh, I studied television and, and, and media and production and theater and all these things. Uh, but uh, I'm not disciplined enough to be an actor and uh, I'm not uh, uh, disciplined enough to be a musician. So I, I, and I have uh, a lot of things that I want to, to say and to share and it's about uh, perspective and about being possible to achieve and to communicate something and, and to exchange uh, uh, perspectives with with people. I'm uh, uh, I'm uh, Angolan, and for a, lo a lot of times, uh, um, if there was a, a necessity to to feel empowered and to empower people, uh, uh, a lot of a lot of the, the the dangers as as I felt as a, an Angolan citizen was that it, it was very important to provide people with tools. You know, I see extremely. Uh, uh, in, in interesting, uh, relevant, uh, uh, important work. Uh, um, Tanya's work, for example, would be uh, uh, so relevant for Angolans, but at the same time, the, um, the content and to decipher that, there, there, there needs to be a bridge to establish because if, for example, Angolans are going to take advantage of that content and the complexity and the layers of what is presented. They've got to have a, 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 a way to access it, you know. So to some extent, I, with, with my work and what I feel uh, uh, um, driven to do is to really to establish that, that bridge so that more and more people can take advantage of so many uh, um, complex, relevant, and consequent content. So I guess that's, that's uh, what um, drives my, 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 my performance to some extent. But there's also a very personal, very selfish, very uh, 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 unsustainable in terms of uh, uh, theoretical defense that I, that, I, that I bring. I feel so, so, also, so, I don't know. It's strong stuff, what Song Dong is, 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 is doing and what moves him and is very, very uh, personal. And I think when, when, when you are uh, that personal, to some extent we can be a dichotomy. It is uh, uh, impossible not to connect, it's impossible not to establish a, 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 a relationship. So I don't know, I feel, I feel very much uh, uh, compelled towards all kinds of different uh, uh, of, of work. It's, um, I remember 
like Tanya know, coming from former Yugoslavia at the time, there were always you need a the participants of all former republics, no? So, and when, for example, when I was doing some curatorial workshops in, in the past, they were always, yeah, it was called Young Curatorial Workshop. It was within the Berlin Biennial. There were always young curators from all the continents, and I feel that we are also here somehow representative of kind of different continents and different, uh, different geographical and, and, and political contexts. So it's interesting what you, what you just said. And Tanya, Thank you. Um, it's a very complex question for me. Um, maybe I should, in the first, uh, first uh, underline that I feel indeed privileged to um, be able to be in the position to express my um, thoughts and uh, my perceptions and ideas about political and social reality through performance and through my own artistic practice. Um, I did study uh, sculpture, actually. Uh, I did MA in sculpture, and um, I did all kinds of um, like uh, workshops that helped me get into this. Um, my first, uh, sorry, uh, performances were tableau vivant, basically, like a living sculptures. And um, then with the experience of doing, I don't know, African dance workshop or uh, kabuki theater workshop or working with uh, great theater directors like um, Dragon Givadino or Peter Greenaway, I had experience of like, uh, okay, finally allowing myself to free my voice and to speak. But still, I'd never, um, I never like to professionalize in performance. I like to, to be so insecure in a, like, uh, and, and not perfect in doing that. And, um, and do really, I did so far only very low budget productions or no budget productions. Um, I did went back to, uh, for example, sculpture this year after not been touching um, clay for over 20 years and I did some kind of um, secret, not secret, but not public uh, masturbation performance of leaving the traces of my movement and my liquids on the clay and it's also kind of performative thing uh, dealing with the issues of uh, women's sexuality and that is very important i did it in uh, in uh, balkans where there is now this whole suppression about uh, uh, women's freedom right um so as a as a artist i feel really privileged and i still always um try to give space through my work to the uh, groups that are not having uh, access to um, have a voice in different ways and um, uh, speaking about certain issues with uh, deep solidarity and um, uh, with really staying on longer terms with the issues and with the people I, I work with. Um, let's see what I can say. Um, well, uh, I come from the countryside in Brazil and, you know, ideas of having culture there. I mean, uh, instead of the folk thing, uh, so I never heard about contemporary art, for example. <laughs> and when I, I came to Rio, that is a big city, uh, I immediately started studying law that was a possibility to survive, to have a profession. And then what I faced was a, a, a family thing as well, that the, the most, uh, the closer, the, the closest person in my life was my brother and he, he got this schizophrenia thing when he was 18. So I started thinking about language and, and meaning and rationality. Uh, and then I started uh, reading a little bit more uh, philosophy. And so I decided to go to the University of, Philo of Philosophy. And then uh, when I was there, I, I really wanted to construct a kind of uh, structure of meanings. And I think the, the, what I decided is to go with this thing related to art because it's possible to construct you know, a kind of language that is related what 
is going on, what you think about things, and so I, I started immediately constructing a structure. And with this, I, I, I also played a lot with this idea, for example, of performance. If I was working with people, why uh, immediately you have to call this performance? So I started this playing a lot with this idea of matter and substance of things. And that's why I see myself much more as a sculpture. Uh, but you know, there, there is a definition of actually of the of the sculpture. It's Dorothea von Hattelmann. No, it says that the sculpture is, for, for example, when you have uh, in relation to the live body in the in the institutional framework. In it, it has like few definition. One of them, it it has to be in the exhibition during the opening time. So you know, it's not just an event, but it, mo it follows more or less certain procedures as the object as an art exhibition, and then is defined as a sculpture. But I have the impression that you have your own definition of all that yes, and yes, your own uh, stake of all that which is yeah. go beyond that you know yeah like, for yeah. sure for sure it's it goes beyond I it's mean, there it is a certain economy also behind your work because as you said you want your also the 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 people who are performing to be paid you want them you know it, there is uh, also you know, they, how long do, do they need to stay during the old duration of the exhibition, or it, dep it depends on the project, it varies from project to project? No, it, they, they stay the whole exhibition, you know, I mean, lots of people switching a lot. But it was important, to an, it is important to understand that the context in Brazil, because we have a very strong scene in the 60s with uh, Ligia Clark and Helio Sica, and immediately when I started in the 90s, People were relating my things uh, to Ligia, for example. Some images uh, were kind of similar because Ligia has these people just trying and constructing a kind of subjectivity. And for me, it was very important to make a, a milestone and make it different because I was telling people that they are objects different. So it was a, polit a different political moment. So this was very important as well. So there are a whole context that are related with this conceptual structure related in Brazil. And then, for example, at that moment was very difficult to see uh, and to have exhibitions uh, with, the parts, with the participation of people in them that you could have the whole duration of the exhibition. They thought that I was crazy in giving this idea because you know, I could just show in the first night just the opening, that's all right. And I said, no, this is not my point. So I was like playing with lots of things related to the certain context, historical context. So it was, of course, it's, it's beyond. It's easier, for example, to, to speak about this idea of sculpture. It's the easiest way. But actually, there are lots of relations, including this political situation. Yeah, and also with the, what, what Tanya was saying uh, before in relation to the, the power structure to the art system. And just for, for curiosity, um, Snejana mentioned it was also, we, we read in your bio, what was the performance that you sold to the museum? Uh, my, my two pieces, <laughs> not performances. Uh, it was these two men, uh, it was two actually, uh, two men united by the hips. It was a work that I presented for the first time in this 24th Biennale of Sao Paulo. And these two men uh, had to, to walk around the whole building. It was actually, it was the first time that a piece was really going to the historical um, floor of the Biennale. And this curator was playing a little bit, mixing historical works from, for example, Bacon or Magritte, but it was really one place that was only for historical with this insurance and all, et cetera. So these two men were walking uh, by the floor together in the whole place. And the second one uh, is a piece uh, that I opened the mouth of someone with a kind of sur surgery apparatus and it's a kind of strong image in the first moment when you see it's very like uh, a metal thing that opens 
the mouth of this man. And what I do is that I put a, a candy, a sweet, on his tongue. So he has to have the sweet you know, with the mouth open. So it's a kind of paradox. You have this strong image, but it's a sweet, just a sweet. So they, they both the instructions, basically? Yeah, this they is are instructions, and they are instructions with uh, several uh, notes on the instructions that I give to the museum. I tell them, for example, they, they cannot show the apparatus, like object. They have really to go and find people and create a whole schedule. So there are lots of documentation. So we show them in the collection, for example. Yeah, yeah, they have to really do it. Mm. So... I, I uh, also wanted to mention this because you asked particularly like how about the us as a performance artist, let's say. Yeah. Uh, because, um, for example, I rarely perform uh, in performance festivals. Um, somehow I'm uh, bored with the context of performance festival a lot. So I try to actually not get established uh, in whatever media or structure, but like... Um, looking for a place where I really want to work. So it's usually a, a real uh, context, like a political or social or the, the city urban space. Uh, I rarely work on the stage, and once I work on the stage, it's completely different. I haven't thrown any of that here, for example. Um, Have you worked on the stage? Oh, yes, yeah. of course. I did um, in Kai Theater uh, uh, performances or in Corner House in Manchester. Uh, I love it too, but... Um, not too often, you know. Um, I'm doing now interdisciplinary studies, like with the anthropology and sociology, and I'm more like in a long-term research projects. And um, so I, I like to limit the amount of performances I do because uh, otherwise I don't feel it as a challenge. And I like to do things only when I really feel like doing them, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But it's interesting because yeah. they're... they're um, as I said, there are different, really different practices that we put under the umbrella of, of performance art. And uh, uh, talking then now that you mentioned the stage and we're, we're talking about the, the museum, and Magda, you, you said that you also talking about Hansen, it was somehow to show, to, to indicate in a way the different histories, no? the different origins, because n now there is a lot to talk about performance and um, we, we all somehow when we think about performance and I'm going to talk about that in, in my presentation we always mainly think about the 60s and the 70s and we mainly think about the, the, the body art but actually the, the, the question is much more complex and how do you institutionally deal with that because there is a boom in the performances also in, in a lot of in institutional level and how do you deal considering the like not or almost not not newborn institution, but in, in the term of also of the, you know, the collection of showing things, of, of inviting artists, of exactly programming or not programming, including in an exhibition. Yeah. Uh, so we, first of all, for a very long time, we were thinking like how to approach performance because uh, performance at the moment is basically not really present in Poland. like. Very few Polish artists do performance, and uh, on the institutional level, it's just it is just absent. And um, like uh, looking at what is happening in London or New York or in other parts of the world, where the performance gets on power in a way, there are like uh, special um, halls built, built solely for performance. We just we just that we have to find our, our own way. And the way has to be a kind of taken out of, of the place we live in, because otherwise it's just an impl implementation of like kind of foreign patterns and we didn't want to do that that way. So we have launched a research project on performance uh, last year, which has two layers. Uh, we do historical research, and this is the part I was presenting in a way where we try to uh, basically uh, gather the stories and just to write the history of, of performance, preserving them from falling into oblivion, because like most of the, uh, of the things are just not written or they, they are just uh, missing, and you can only uh, 
trace them when talking to the artists who are luckily still alive, most of them, or, going, or looking through their archive. But on the other hand, we didn't want to keep it uh, uh, in the past, like we, we, we felt we, ne we, we need to like make a bridge between the past and the present. So like uh, uh, simultaneously, simultaneously we started to work with Andrea Lepecki, who is like performance professor in NYU in New York. And we tried to uh, like kind of meet the discourse of contemporary performance studies with our historical work. Uh, because what we found very like uh, disturbing in a way is that even if we invite like you were doing this extraordinary performance with Pierre Balblon, uh, Monet Vivant, and there was uh, there was no reaction on it, like nobody wrote on it. People like didn't really uh, know what to say or how to say. There was no critique, nothing. And then we said like it's pointless at some point when you when there are no tools to like dismantle this kind of really complex structures so uh, so this is why we just instantiated this research uh, project on two levels but i also wanted to comment a little bit on the word performance which i find very interesting because in poland until 1978 the word per performance does not exist actually it was introduced by an international uh, fest performance festival late in the 70s and the, ex uh, the, pro the things that I was describing come from the very early 70s. So the artists were doing live uh, actions but they were doing it, but they were naming it in a very, very different way like some were doing actions, some were, were doing conversations, some were, were doing games, and everyone has a very different description of, on their activity. And they were very much persisting on it because like when the name performance was introduced, they felt they are obliged to like conform to a certain format, which they felt performance is not, because performance was like introduced like in a way to rebel artwork, like to go beyond the boundaries, and they were put it into the boundaries, like, you know, under the label performance, and they very strongly opposed it. And most of them, like Zofia Kulik, she still does not use word performance. She says, I, I do actions. But a lot of contemporary artists also have the, their interpretation of the, of the of definition of the word performance. It was interesting what Snezhana was saying, that how in Chinese the first uh, access to, to performance was through uh, word behavior. We have another five minutes. I don't know, should I open it to the to the public if there are some burning questions for the public, not to more light. light, yeah, because we are in this we are on the stage here, so Okay, so if, if there is we, we can see you anyway, so if there is Раз, раз, спасибо большое. Добрый день, дорогие друзья, у кого есть вопросы, задавайте, пожалуйста, пожалуйста. Если... Конечно, у нас довольно мало времени, может быть, чтобы отвечать на этот вопрос, но все-таки сегодняшнее первое заседание связано с личным опытом. И это очень трогающее такое заседание. Вот, оно вызывает очень много эмоций, но все-таки не могли бы вы охарактеризовать очень коротко, как в вашей практике, я обращаюсь прежде всего к практикам, вы решаете вопрос между личным и общим. Вы вообще решаете этот вопрос между личным и общим? Между личным опытом и интимным, который становится символом для публики? Где или с какими словами связано для вас вот этот переход от общего к публичному? От, то есть от личного к публичному. Спасибо. Is there is someone specific you want to ask or all four of the artists? 
Por Dios. Por Dios. You don't have a lot of time, so I'll, I'll, I'll go for it. Um, I, I don't, uh, this, this, this is, this is uh, uh, something that comes to me uh, all, all the time, especially getting, getting uh, uh, engaged with the context of performance. And I was learning all about it uh, 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 yesterday, about the context of performance in, in Russia in a particular way. I don't make that distinction, you know, and, and uh, I have a very distant relationship with definitions, even, even for myself, because they, they have the tendency to become uh, 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 prisons on, on, on how you decide what to do and how to go about it. I do believe that we are individuals, and I, and I, and I do think that artists must, above all, be individuals, but because we are individuals within contexts, uh, uh, I think we are, we are not, if, 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 no, if it's not going to be redundant, uh, uh, that unique. So in a sense, whenever you are expressing a very personal idea, the, the, the possibility that there are thousands or millions or hundreds of dozens of people that do share that same experience or that point of view, or, or do can, even if it is an interpretation of what motivates you to do such a thing, I think it, it will relate to, to, to people. One of the things that I think uh, um, drives me knowing, am I going to do this or not, is got to do also, is it extremely intimate? Do I care about this personally uh, enough to die for it? Is this something that is so important to me? Because if I'm sure that it is that, I'm also to some extent sure that it's going to communicate with someone else. So to some extent, uh, making that distinction, I don't know if it is necessary. And I believe that this is one of the privileges uh, as an artist that you do have. I, I would like also to add something because I think uh, Song Dong said, cl said clearly in his presentation that for him that's one. And uh, now you stated, Nasita, also. Um, for me, it's a question of like uh, really how much you are willing to engage into something, right? Are you doing nine to three job, nine, 9 a.m., 3 p.m. job, or you know, are you having uh, sex with condoms and not having an emotional relationship in the same time? Uh, are you, um, you know, like how deep you go into what you're doing? And for me, uh, it's the only way to really give all of myself in what I'm doing, to actually engage fully. And then, of course, that uh, uh, the, the clear distinguish, distinguishment between art and life um, does disappear, because once you're really fully engaged with the issues you work with and the people you work with, this stays and develops. Well, uh, I think we are engaged with public things. We call ourselves artists. We create things in relation to history as well. We understand a certain context. Otherwise, we, we would be in a mental institution. So we are really related, you know? It's just that. It's very simple. <laughs> Sometimes I believe we already are. <laughs> Although you already commented on that in a way, yeah. 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 I, I think the question is uh, very simple because we are artists. So if we're doing something and to show everybody in the exhibition space and in the public space and uh, should be relationship with the public. And sometimes I think uh, personal things is the public things. Uh, because for my work, you know, everybody have a father, mother, so we can share the experience and with another people. And also, uh, when the uh, private things is uh, showed in the public and uh, to have another angle to think about our life. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the, yes, the last question. Yeah. Can you bring the mic over there? Thank you. I 
Спасибо. Я хотела бы задать вопрос Магде. Меня очень заинтересовало и показалось крайне важной вот это утопическое измерение перформанса, которое прозвучало в вашей презентации. Буквально утопическое, в смысле отсутствия места, да, если говорить этимологически. И, и вот, вот этот момент не... Не институциализу, не, то есть существование перформанса вне институции. Как оно выглядит? Вот это интересно. Понятен вопрос? Да-да-да. 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 Да. 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 In Poland, there is one performance festival that is that goes like that that was launched probably already in the 70s, and this is the place where uh, artists uh, take part. But these artists are mostly from of the generation of the 70s, so there is like an international network of performance artists that gather every year in uh, one of the places in Poland or abroad because it's an international network. But this does not really come through to the public uh, in a way, like to the public institution, because it's a little bit a festival that is frozen in time. It's, uh, they don't really, they, they, they are basically like working the way they were working in the 70s without really taking into consideration the change which was a a considerable difference, I think, uh, between the 70s and now, like the transformation. So uh, some artists, the artists that do performance, uh, like uh, Oskar Dawitski or um, uh, Cezary Bodzianowski, uh, they do it occasionally from time to time. They get invited on certain occasions. But what I meant by like lack of institutional framework is that there is like performance pops up from time to time, but there is very little, like I said, like Bojanowski and Davidski, there are probably two that could be mentioned from like a range of Polish artists uh, that do performance. And I think this has also to do with economic reasons at the moment, is that you, at least in Poland, not, you can't really like live from it. Uh, so artists, try to do different things, like to get their living. I'm not sure if I uh, answered your question. No, спасибо. Um, uh, with this, I think we, uh, we will close today's session. Thank you very, very much. Very insightful. I just wanted to say a few words that uh, today in the afternoon, uh, in the program it's written we start at 1.45, but because we're on a little bit late, so we start at 2. Um, and the, se the afternoon session is called The Potentiality of the Real. Um, we have great speakers, uh, among those Rosalie Goldberg, Anna Janewski, who is here, Yuri Karpan. Um, and um, there will be a discussion with Lina Zuverovic, and there will be a discussion uh, moderated by Julia Liederman. Uh, with Rosalie, Anna, Yuri, and Lina. After that, there will be another discussion, uh, it was uh, slightly on a bigger scale, moderated by our chief curator, Kate Fowell, with almost all the participants of these two days. So I hope you uh, come back for this afternoon. And I also wanted to say that uh, in the evening at 7.30, we're all going to the Jewish Museum and Center for Tolerance, where there will be a series of performances and a closing party for the conference. I hope to see you there as well. Thank you very much.